In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new Stripe Payments API specifically for subscriptions. I'm going to walk through the whole process. I'll show you in your Stripe account how to create a subscription, how to create a price, and then I'm just going to use vanilla JavaScript, HTML, and Node.js to explain how to create a session, how to handle that session, and how to update your user information in the process to show that, yes, they are a paying subscriber now. The first thing you'll want to do is have a Stripe account, you'll want to make sure you're in test mode whenever you're uh, just testing out the process or it will actually charge your card. You can click on this developers section. You'll need the API keys. You'll want to get this secret key. You can go ahead and save that to an environment variable in your project. The other thing you'll want to do if you're creating a subscription is click this more button over here. Come down to product catalog. Click this add product button. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just say my subscription. You can give it a description. This is my subscription description. You can provide an image to go along with the subscription. I'll just pick a random image. You'll want to say if this is recurring or one off. I'm going to say it's recurring and I'll just say $1. So over here, it gives you a preview. A quantity of one equals $1. It's good to give it a value of one because then it gives you more control. Whenever you're creating the subscription, you can just increase the quantity by a dollar. So even if it's like a hundred dollars a month or something, you could just add a quantity of a hundred and it will automatically update to be a hundred dollars a month. I'm going to click add product. Then you can see your product it should appear here. You can click on the product. And the thing we're looking for is this price ID. This is another thing you'll need for your project. So you can copy this and save it to another environment variable. And that's all the information you need to get started. I'll go ahead and go to my project. I just have a basic Node.js server uh, that uses Express and I have that at the root of my project and I have a client folder for the client code. On my client side, I just have a checkout button and a script to a script.js file. And this is what that file looks like. It just has a post request to a create checkout session. And obviously when you're live, you'll want to change the uh, URL to be whatever your URL is. My server is on localhost 4040. And what's going to happen is it is going to return a URL that is going to be used to take you to the Stripe checkout session. And I'll just show you what that looks like in a moment. I'll put a link to that in the description below. One of the first things you'll want to do on your server is create a const Stripe. And for the value of that, say require stripe string with your stripe private key remember how i said in your stripe account in developers for api keys you'll need that secret key well that goes right here that's where that stripe private key goes now you're able to use the stripe api just using the variable stripe this is my create checkout session api endpoint the first thing you need to do is create a session this is very important you need to start creating sessions first before you do anything with the Stripe Payments API, just so it'll work all around the world in all circumstances. So to do that, you can say const session equals await stripe.checkout.sessions.create. And these are the four main things you need inside of your session create object. You need a success URL. This is the URL that you want the user to go to after they successfully pay for the product. And that can be any link you want. You need a cancel. URL. This isn't absolutely required, but if you want a back button in your uh, Stripe checkout session, you should put this here or there will not be a back button. So you'll probably want to put a cancel URL, say where you would like uh, the user to be taken to if they cancel. And here are a couple of the line items. The first one is price. Remember in your uh, Stripe account, how I had you click on the product you created, and then you can come down here and click copy your price ID right here. It'll start with the word price. You put that right here and you'll notice I imported all my .env variables up here. So I'm just using their names directly, but that is where you would put the Stripe price ID. Next, you would say the quantity. Remember we made it $1 so that it would be easy to update the quantity. So my quantity, I'm just saying, I have a const up here where I say 25, just the number 25, because I want it to be $25 a month. Then 
next thing you need to put is mode. This can either be payment, which if it's a payment, it's going to be a one-time payment. So it will not become a subscription. So if you want it to be a subscription, you should put subscription, which that's what I'm going to do in this session. After you run this code, you'll receive a session object. The things we'll be interested in is I'll go ahead and get the whole session for you so you can see what it looks like. But we want the session ID and the session URL. So session.id, session.url, especially. The reason is you want to save the session ID to the user's data in the database. In your database for the user row, you want to make sure after this is done, first get the session ID. And however your database is structured, you'll want to save your session ID to the user in your database because you'll need this after the user successfully goes through the checkout process. That'll be the only way that you'll be able to know if the payment was successful or not. So it's really important. You should get the session ID and save it to the user however you do that. The other thing you need is the session.url. In your return, return an object with the value of URL session.url. This URL is the place that the user needs to be taken to to provide their payment information. And you'll notice back on our front end code in the script.js file, uh, after posting to create checkout session, in the return, we get the URL and we take the user to that URL. So this session is going to create a unique URL that will be used to take the user to that place to provide their credit card information. And so let's go ahead and walk through this code. Just go ahead and run this function just so you can see what happens. So here's my front end code. It's just a simple checkout button. I'm going to click checkout and show you what happens on the back end. So it went ahead and ran this Stripe code here. It created a session and this is what a session object looks like right here. It has a bunch of values. And again, the two things you're really interested in is the ID here, which you should save to your user's database row. And then this URL here, whenever you go to this URL, that's the session that is being returned. And so that URL is being returned, but always remember, again, make sure to save your session ID first before you return something. But we returned the URL and over here in our front end code, we said window.location equals URL. And you'll notice now what happened is, and I'll go ahead and cancel and just show it again. Click checkout. It automatically takes you to a place like this. And you'll notice that cancel back button is there because we provided a cancel URL and that took us back to our checkout page. The way to use the test form is you can provide whatever email you want and just use the numbers 424242 for everything and then it will work. These numbers here don't matter, just the card number matters. Click subscribe and you'll notice it took us back to the success URL. This is the success URL and you'll notice it's just the home page. I just took them back to the home page. But if you have a different success URL, it'll take you to wherever you have set it. At this point, what you would need to do is you will need to have saved the user's user ID, something like that. However, you reference your user. Whenever it's taken back to the success page, you'll need to run some sort of function automatically. And it can trigger something like uh, I created an endpoint called Stripe Session. And your goal with running this Git function is to check, was the session successful? Did the user successfully pay or did they not successfully pay? And so you'll need to send something like a user ID. Your first step will be to use however you connect to your database, get your user and the things you'll want from your user is the Stripe session ID that remember you save that, you're supposed to save that up here. Get your Stripe session ID, check if they're a paying subscriber already or not. And then if they are not a paying subscriber and they have a session ID, you can go on to check the session to see if it was successful. So notice I, I first here, I check if there's no session ID at all, then I just want to return a fail. Or if the user's already paying, I want to return a fail so that this next part doesn't run. But if there is a session 
ID and paid sub is fail. Then you can go on to retrieve the session. The way that works is you can do const session equals await stripe dot checkout dot sessions dot retrieve. And the value here needs to be the stripe session ID that you saved that you got from your original post up here, this session ID that would go here. And the result of the session, if you retrieve a session, it would give you another gigantic object, but the values, this is an example result. The values you're interested in are the customer. This is a way to know, uh, just in Stripe, they give each customer an ID. So this would be a customer ID. You might want to save this to the user's database, just so you have record of it. Uh, and the main, main thing is this status. You want to see if the status was complete. If the status equals complete, that means the payment was successful. And you can go ahead and update the user's database to say, this is a paying subscriber. They successfully paid. You might also want to save the subscription ID that they give you. So whenever you run this kind of code, if you said mode subscription, then it will create a subscription ID. This is sometimes useful if you want to update the subscription in the future, you'll need this subscription ID. So it's smart to save this subscription ID to the user in your database as well. And then you can run whatever you want from then on out to show that this is a paying user. This is just an example. I say if there is a session object and the session dot status is equal to complete, then I want to update the user to say it's a, a true paying subscriber. And obviously, again, you probably want to save the customer ID, the subscription ID as well. And then on the front end, after you automatically run that code, if it was all successful, then you don't have to show the checkout button anymore. You can just show them your app from that point on. I hope that was helpful. I'll provide the code in the description below. I'll also provide links to the Stripe documentation in the description below. And one final thing before I go is I wanted to mention nextchat.ai. It is the sponsor of this video. Nextchat.ai works just like ChatGPT, except it's more secure. It's kind of like the DuckDuckGo of ChatGPT. DuckDuckGo works like Google, but it's private. It doesn't track your data. Nextchat.ai is the same way. It works just like ChatGPT. I use it almost every single day, but it's secure. It does not keep record of your conversations. It's literally impossible for Nextchat to have access to your conversations, which is very valuable when you're using proprietary code. You can feel safe knowing that Nextchat will not save your data. You'll notice it works just like ChatGPT. It's got the same great service, but like I said, it doesn't track the conversations. It also has some additional cool features. You can search through your uh, conversations. So say I wanted to find an API or something, it'll return all the conversations about APIs. You can also create folders and save your conversations inside of those folders. You can also create prompts. Uh, this is something I use a lot in projects. I like to save, say I'm working on a Next.js app or something like that. I could save uh, the template colors and things like that. So I'm not always having to tell uh, ChatGPT what technology I'm using, what branding I'm using. I can just have a uh, prompt saved. I can go to that prompt and then start a conversation. This is my conversation. And then it'll start returning results. Thank you for watching this video. Video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.